Brothers, how are we doing? Hey, everyone. Um, Edwin here. If you don't know who I am, I am one of the youth leaders. I do help Jimmy out from time to time doing a talk like we're going to do right now. Um, so I hope everyone's doing fine, even though we're in a difficult situation. As we've always said, but you know what? Uh, hopefully at the end of this talk, you might bring the anxiety down a little bit um, and we get to see what God actually wants for us in this time. So I'm just going to go straight into it. So we're talking about bad news. We are navigating bad news. So today, you know, it's called the age of information. Uh, we have so many ways of getting information, uh, you know, social media, through Facebook or not many. Well, Facebook for the older people and for the younger people, other ways of doing stuff. Snapchat, I have no idea how that works yet. Um, but, you know, there is many information. There's news on the TV. There's news in social media. Um, and all these things are coming at us. They're being bombarded from time to time. Um, but I'd like to talk about the word news. The word news, it's an interesting word because it's not what you think it means. So the word news comes from a French word, which means novel. Novel in a really bad French pronunciation. Uh, it means new things. That's all it means. Well, you notice what it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean accurate, okay? It just means new. And we use that as Christians, we use that in, in the word gospel, which is also another way of saying good news. So the new thing about God, it's a new thing that's coming, good news, that's how we use it. Um, but there is a negative side of news and information, and I think we all know that. Um, you know, part of it is the way that we process the information. And, you know, news, it's... It's not, even though it's new, it might not be meant for everybody. So there is an agenda behind whoever is giving the news. So Channel 9 wants to have pointed in a certain way, Channel 7, Sky News, anything on Facebook. Um, whoever's posting it is sort of controlling the story. So it's not, it might not be for everybody. So if you have a website that's mainly about mothers with children, it's about mothers with children. And if it's a young person's website or Instagram or Snapchat or whatever it is, it's through that way of, of talking. So if you're from a different age bracket, it doesn't always work. So you can't just take all information and go, hey, it's true just because there's heaps of people that are following this page or liking it or something like this. Or if it's on prominent news like Channel 9 or Channel 7, uh, they have a way of, of dealing with these things. And they, they, they want to tell a story and it might not, not be the story that is for you specifically. Um, and the problem with that is with the, there's a negative aspect of having too much news. When there's too much news, you, you have a tendency to feel demoralized when you're getting bombarded with everything. It's, um, you know, you end up feeling down. Um, you know, and, you know, and really related to that, uh, the problem when you're feeling down is you tend to overinflate things. You tend to make things out more than they actually are. Um, and you kind of lose the will to fight a little bit sometimes. And, and there's a story in the Old Testament uh, with the Israelites that can pretty much sums this up in a very kind of interesting way. And I'll, and I'll be going through that right now. So what we're going to be going through is Deuteron uh, sorry, Numbers 13 from verse 26 to 33. So this is when the Israelites are on the outskirts of the Promised Land. They're about to enter into Canaan, right, the Promised Land. And then Moses sends 12 spies. It's 12 spies, they go in, they do a recon, which is like a stealth mission looking at what's happening. They come back and they give a report to the people, to, to Moses. And what happens is, from this report, there's sort of bad things that happen. The people overinflate it. So I'll be going through the verse real quick. So it says, But the men who have gone up with him said, We can't attack these people. They are stronger than we are. They are spread among the Israelites. Then they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, The land devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there. The descendants of Anak called, came from the Nephilim. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. So that's the interesting part, grasshoppers. Um, there's a lot of, lot of demoralization that was happening with regards to what the mission was going to happen, right? Um, and, you know, why is this passage relevant to us right now? Well, part of this is it's a prime example of what happens when you get bad news, bad information, and you take it and you run it among. What happened with that? The people turned away from God. They asked for a new leader. And if you've been following term two, 
it's kind of normal. Uh, they wanted to do that, but they were just about to go in and then they asked for something new. They want a new person. They want to go back to Egypt, right? Well, because of some bad news. What they didn't do is they didn't have a mentality of, hey, let's trust God. This is the, the God that brought them out of slavery. And this is also the God that provided for them throughout this entire time. You know, so for us, it's like, well, you know, what, what's that got to do with us? You know, so what do we do about the same information? How are we like these rulers? Well, I think part of what we need to do is we need to acknowledge that there is bad news. Uh, and I think part of that is we process that through a way that's naturally going to happen and just let, let it go in the sense of emotions are natural. When, when you're angry about something, that's a natural thing. When you're frustrated about something, that is also a natural thing. You can laugh, you can cry, all these things are natural. And it's not buried under the sand that it's not going to happen because it will happen. And it's normal to react the way that you're going to react. That's fine. The issue is, what do you do after that? The real thing is, what do you do after that? And I think there's many characters in the Bible that give us a good example. Habakkuk, Jeremiah, and even King David, they went straight to God with what they did. They processed it, they cried about it, they got angry about it, then they went straight to God. They didn't take it upon themselves. And in this story, with regards to the Israelites going into Canaan, the example that I think is the best um, is Caleb. So Caleb, in uh, Numbers 13, verse 30, you know, he, um, you know, paraphrasing, he says, the time is now ready to attack. We need to go in. See, Caleb had a God-centered attitude. He was one of the spies that went in. He saw that was going to be difficult. But what he didn't do was he didn't say, we're going to turn around. He said, God is going to get us through this. He had a victorious attitude. He was the attitude of someone that wanted to fight for something that was of great value, and that's fight for what God wanted. And it's the same way with us, is that God had a plan. God had a plan for Caleb, he had a plan for the Israelites, and he also had a plan for us. And it's the same way that we can see the situation that's happening right now. Now with COVID, we don't know what's gonna happen. We don't know if it's gonna get worse, we don't know if it's gonna get better. We hope and we pray that it will. But irregardless of what's gonna happen, the plan is always in effect. So I want you to think like this, does God have a plan for COVID with regards to your life? Because if you're not doing something, if you're not God-centered right now, you're wasting this time. And it's the same way as, you know, the question is, do you have a God-centered mind, a victorious mind, or are you like the Israelites, are you going to turn around? That's the real question. And I'm going to leave you with Revelation 21, 5 to 7. This is at the end of history, it's written in there, and this is what we have to look forward to. These are, this is the reason why we can be victorious. And I'll read it, and then we'll go on from there. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. So that's the promise that God has. He's got a plan. Ultimately, He will fulfill it. It's going to go through us. If we are in Him, we are victorious. We need to have that mentality first. Whenever we look at bad news, we need to sift through what's good and understand what does God have through this. What's that about me? It may not be about me. So we don't need to go overboard. We have to trust in what God says because it's trustworthy and true. And his word will never fade and everything else will. So keep with that. Stay strong. Keep learning. Stay safe. Edwin out.